Dr. Jacob Glanville is founding partner and president of Distributed Bio and a computational immunoengineer. He is also featured in the Netflix documentary series Pandemic, uh, which some of us want to watch right now and some of us don't want to watch right now. Um, doctor, good to see you tonight. Thank you so much for being here. I saw you yesterday talking to Liz Clayman on the Business Channel, and I was so intrigued um, by what you were describing. Explain to everybody at home what you're working on. Sure. So, Martha, thank you for having me on. Uh, what my company is doing is adapting antibodies to recognize and neutralize the novel coronavirus. Mm. So this would act like a, it's sort of skipping what a vaccine does. So instead of giving you a vaccine and waiting for it to produce an immune response, we just give you those antibodies right away. And so within about 20 minutes, that patient has the ability to neutralize the virus. So how far how close are you to achieving this goal? How many months, years away are you from being able to give people what's essentially a treatment, right? Sure. So we're moving super fast on this. Uh, we had a little bit of a scare when the ordinance uh, shut down all non-essential business here in San Francisco. But my team members all volunteered to come in and keep working on this, and we had an exception. So we're about three to four weeks away from completing all of our engineering. At that point, the completed drug is going to go to the U.S. Amarid, so that's the U.S. military, and they're going to be testing it for its ability to neutralize the virus. At the same time, that drug is going to go to Charles River Laboratories, which is an international contract research group, which is going to mm -hmm. test the safety of that drug. Both of those pieces of information come together so that we can uh, produce batches, go through some red tape, and then do the first human studies that we'll do on 200 to 600 people in the summer, probably in July. So that, just to be clear, that study, I'm sorry, just, just to be clear, it's a vaccine or it's a treatment? It's an antibody. It's a treatment. Okay. So, so if we, you get it's it, a, it's you, an infusion. Exactly. Um, so, you know, talk to me a little bit. You said so in the summer, human trials could begin. Um, but, you know, what's your time frame on how long we're going to? Do you think what we're doing right now is working in terms of social distancing and just basically shutting down so much of life in America? Is that working? And what kind of trajectory do you see us on when we look at these other countries? Sure. So it is definitely helping. We are way safer now than we were a week ago. The social distancing measures slow down the growth of new cases. But the problem is eventually people have to go back to work. And the coronavirus appears so infectious that we, we don't think we're actually going to be able to, to squish out the, the pandemic just through social distancing. So eventually we're going to need medicine because otherwise uh, all the models I'm looking at are guessing that this thing's going to last all year and it could indeed become seasonal with everybody eventually becoming infected. So you've been trying to basically cure uh, a flu or new flus or all flus together in your lab for a long time. What is so unique about this and how, how is this different when you look at it under a microscope than, than what you were planning on? Well, so we still are doing that flu research. Um, we have a broad spectrum flu vaccine that is supported by the Gates Foundation, the mm -hmm. End the Pandemic Threat Initiative. Um, the difference with coronavirus is that it, uh, it's a very different type of virus. It's much more deadly and it's much more infectious. And so it needs different types of medicine. So right now, because there is no medicine, even though I think a vaccine is a good idea and I'm glad that people are working on it, it just takes too long to run trials for vaccines for that to be able to help us now when we need it. So what my group is doing, because other groups are already working on vaccines, is that we're making an antibody therapeutic. That could be tried in humans in the summer to do a, what's called a phase one slash two study on about 600 people. And that sets us up by September to be able to use something called compassionate use, which is to say if it works well in the summer, we can start handing it out to hundreds of thousands of people who need it by the fall. So when you look at other countries, you look at what's going on in Italy and you see these bed shortages and these terrible decisions that we're hearing doctors making in terms of ventilators, are we going to see that here? There's going to be some of that. The good news is that we've made a series of very strict social distancing measures across the entire United States. This has been declared a national emergency and absolutely the right decisions were made. And that means that it may seem scarier, but the truth is we are now safer. Mm -hmm. So we're on a different trajectory than what Italy is experiencing. Our medical care is excellent. That said, this thing is really infectious and it's growing. So we are gonna see stress on our hospitals and our ICUs throughout the nation. And that's part of the reason why the White House made such a strong decision to go um, institute these uh, 
these isolation measures. So just just one last question, which is a really big question, but I'm going to ask you to do it in a, in a very, uh, in an easy way that people can understand, because I heard you uh, mention this with Liz. You know, when you look at this under the microscope and you, you say, you know, we were looking at SARS, we're looking at other uh, infectious diseases in the past, you know, how do you teach, how do you teach this medicine to go after this disease? Okay, so this is actually pretty cool. So mm -hmm. the way our medicine works, because we wanted to get a medicine really quickly, is that we went back to SARS from almost 20 years ago, mm -hmm. 2002, and people had created these five different really good antibodies that neutralized SARS. So if SARS ever came back, those would be great drugs. And what we've done in our laboratory is we're tweaking them. We're using bioengineering methods to ad adapt them to net recognize the new coronavirus. And so by doing this, we're, we're hitchhiking on two years of research to be able to make drugs super fast that recognize the new, vi the new, the new virus. And we teach them to do that by creating hundreds of millions of mutations and then testing them in our laboratory very quickly. It's, it's fascinating. I, I think what you're doing is fascinating. And um, I, I really appreciate you being here and explaining it to us. Um, doctor, thank you. Dr. Jacob Glanville, um, I hope you'll keep us posted as, as this moves forward. We will. We'll check back in with you. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Glanville.